chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Uh, thank you, Brother Tom, for reading that this morning. It says, This know also that in the last days, church, we're living right now in the last days, um, perilous times shall come. For men shall, men meaning everyone, shall be lovers of their own selves. They, they only care about themselves. They don't care about anybody else. And what's the golden rule? To treat other people how you like to be treated. So they've already broken the golden rule because all they care about is themselves. And so they're, they're also covetous. They're, they're boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. When I, when I see all those things, uh, boasters, proud, blasphemers, I see that on social media all day long. All day long. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. It says, without natural affection, you ever see somebody do something and you're like, why did you do that? You know, you didn't feel like, like that was wrong. You didn't, you didn't feel that in your heart. Like, why did you do that to that person? You know, that's, they don't have the natural affection, that, that natural love that you wouldn't want to do that to somebody. They don't have that. That's what the Bible says. They don't have that natural affection. It says, truth breakers, False accusers, incontinent, fierce, uh, despisers of those that are good, um, traitors, heady, high-minded, and lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And, and they have a form of godliness. They, uh, they say they're Christians. They say that they're believers, but their actions show something completely different. Uh, they have a form of godliness, but it says they deny the power thereof. And he gives us the answer 
to how to deal with toxic people. He says, from such, turn away. He says, turn away from them. He says, avoid them. He says, get away from them. Uh, uh, you need to spend some time separating yourself from these types of people in order to get some peace back in your life. Um, and, and listen to some more scriptures. If you want to write these down to, to use these, uh, maybe you want to make a, a New Year's resolution to, to make uh, your relationships better. Um, you want to make your intimate relationship better. You want to have a better relationship with your family member that has been toxic to you because you still have to deal with them. They're still your family member. Um, and you still have to deal with that parent that uh, you had a child with, but you're no longer together. You still have to deal with that, that in-law that gets on your last nerve. You still have to deal with them. So let's get some tips um, from scripture first on how to deal with these things. Now, the first one, it says, turn away. Now, you can't completely avoid this. You can't completely avoid this person. When you go to a family event, when they come up to you, you can't be like, <laughs> and, and run the other way. And you have to be, uh, you have to be copacetic, right? So, so what it means when it says turn away, it says don't spend so much time with them. If you can, if you can, try to avoid them. Because, because if they're exhibiting these, these toxic personality traits, you're going to be frustrated. Wow. That's, that's, to, that's to say the least. You're going to be a one frustrated person wow. all the time. And then that frustration turns to wrath. Yes. And when there comes wrath, there comes sin. So you don't want to be around that. All right, so it says turn away. But in Titus chapter 3 and verse 10, you can write that one down if you want. Titus 3.10, a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition rejects. So a man that, that still causes trouble after you tell him the first time, and the second time, it says have nothing to do with them anymore. You gave them, you gave them the first one, and you talked to them, hey, listen, um, when you do that to me, when you say that to me, that really, really bothers me. Um, it really, really hurts me when you act that way. Wow. And then they continue to do it again and again and again. And they won't change. And you're being you're being uh, reasonable about it, and you're being respectful about it, and you're coming to them and letting them know that what they're doing is completely wrong, but they still continue to act that way. It says after the first is it's rejected. Just don't have anything to do with them. Wow. Here's another one in First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. It supports what it said from such turn away. You know this one. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So when you continue to, to hang around or, or, or spend time with this person that is toxic, guess what's going to happen to you? You are going to become toxic. You see it. You see it. You see it happen. You start to you start to behave in the same ways that they do. Um, you start to what do they call it? Stoop down to their level. You, you, the Bible is right. Now listen. In Galatians six nine, it says, "Let us not be weary and well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not." Listen. If if you're dealing with with just a bunch of toxicity on your job. It's okay. Don't, don't grow weary in being the bigger person. I know it's hard to be the bigger person when, when everybody talks this way to you or treats you this way. But, but the Bible says if you continue to do the right thing, if you continue to do well, then in due season, you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to get rewarded for continuing to be the bigger person. And don't you believe Romans 8.28, that, that all things will work together for those that, that love the Lord. Don't you believe that? So, so continue to be the bigger person. Continue to be the Christian that God has called you out to be. And don't stoop down to their level. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Because they because toxic people, they, they push your buttons. They literally know what makes you mad. And they, and they come up to you and they start pushing it. I know this makes you mad. Beep, beep, they're pushing it, they're pushing it. And, and every time they push your buttons, you start to get upset. 
And you get more upset, and you get more upset. That's why God said, hey, listen, you need to get away from that. Because you can't, you can't deal with, no matter how strong you are, eventually, you're going to break. Eventually, you're going to break. When somebody keeps on pressing your buttons, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a, I have so much patience, you can just keep on. Just keep on, it's okay. Keep on pressing my buttons. Keep on pressing. <laughs> eventually, you're going to snap. Eventually, you're going to snap. So, so, so separate yourself. Separate yourself and believe that all things are going to work out for you. Now, now listen, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So this is a, this is a commandment that goes against being that type of toxic person. You shouldn't be uh, speaking any bitterness. You shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be displaying any wrath. Or you shouldn't be so angry all the time that you can't control it. Um, and evil speaking, it says, be, put it away from you. And, and, and malice, uh, wanting to hurt somebody, uh, wanting to do something, uh, is, is usually something that's vengeful. Somebody has hurt you, and, and you just want to get back at them. It says, put that away from you. And Ephesians 4.32, the next verse says, and be ye kind, church. Be kind. Now, I want to speak on this a little bit because um, God told us to be kind, but he didn't tell us to always be nice. Now, 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 listen now. Christians are called to be kind and to love everyone like ourselves. But Christians are not punching bags. We don't, we don't just roll with the punches. We don't, because, because God has called us to be kind and because we're supposed to love everybody, we're just supposed to let everybody run over us. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, so be kind one to another. Be tenderhearted. Be forgiving. Right? Be forgiving uh, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So we forgive them. We love them. We're kind. We're tenderhearted to them. We have compassion. We understand because they've probably been through something and that's why they're acting that way in the first place. But still, I'm not a punching bag. I'm not just going to let you get away with being toxic to me. So what did he say? Reject them. What did he say? Turn away. Separate yourself from them. Because in Proverbs 13, 20, it says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. So your circle, you, you got to be careful who's in your circle. Y'all know that term, your circle? You got to be careful who's in your circle. Are the people that's in your circle, are they bringing you up or are they tearing you down? Are they, are they making you a better person? Or is it that whenever you come around them, after you have a conversation with them, you... You drain, you need to take a nap somewhere. You don't have any energy because they're just sucking all of the energy from you because of their negativity, because of their, their poison, because of their, their toxicity. So, so it says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now, this doesn't mean go live under a rock somewhere, church. This doesn't mean uh, every time you see people that aren't Christians, you got to run and go the other way. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. Um, the people that you spend all your time with, the ones that you talk to for hours on the phone, the one who you text every day, are they bringing you up? Are they lifting you up to be a better person or are they... Are they tearing you down? Are they influencing you to go and do what they're doing, which might be good or, or might be bad? Or are they, or are they, are they, are, do they respect your boundaries because they know that you're a Christian? Do they continuously ask you, hey, why don't you, why don't you come take a drink with us, man? And, and they know that you don't do that. Why don't you come over here and go to the bar with us, man? You don't have to drink, just come to the bar with us. Uh, are, they, are they pushing your boundaries or are they lifting you up? That's a question that we ought to ask ourselves. And church, I know it's hard dealing with people because sometimes uh, when they do you wrong, the first thing you want to do is snap back at them. You want to snap back so bad. But 1 Peter 3, 9 tells us not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarize blessing. Knowing that ye are there unto call, and ye should inherit blessing. See, when God sees that you're being persecuted, 
and you're being mistreated and you don't meet that mistreatment with the same evil, God will bless you. He said he would. Do you believe what he said? He said he's going to bless you if you don't meet that evil with evil. And listen, uh, we're going to talk about now identifying uh, these, these people that are toxic. So, so a person can say whatever they want to say. Right? They can say they love you. They can say that, that you're their best friend. They can say whatever they want. But what the Bible says, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Um, what does that mean? I'm not, look, I don't care about what you say. I care about what you do. Now, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to just not trust any of your words. I believe that you're not going to just lie to me. But, but I'm looking at what you do. Um, you will know them by what they do, not by what they say. Uh, they, they say they love you, but then when you get home, they, they're beating on you. What, is, what does that mean? Uh, uh, they say that they, that they love you, but then they go out and they cheat on you. What, what, is, what does that mean? Uh, they say that they love you, but you've been sick in the bed and in the hospital for weeks, and they haven't even called you. What, is, what does that mean? By their fruits, by what they do, you will know them. Now, now here's some warning signs um, when you're, you're dealing uh, with some toxic people. Sometimes, sometimes you got to listen to your gut. Um, sometimes, uh, literally, inside your gut, you have this feeling that this person is just no good for you. Um, and it's not, and it's not just, it's not a superstitious thing. It's your conscience. It's your the spirit because of what they're doing. You see them doing certain things, and you're like, "Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute." That, but you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you, you, your, your gut feeling tells you that they're toxic, but your heart just doesn't want to believe it. Uh, you know, you know, sometimes you just have, you have so many dreams and aspirations, right? You have all these things you want to do. Um, and you know you have the time and talent to get there. Everybody has the ability to do whatever they whatever they aspire to do. But but a, a warning sign is that this person this person is holding you back. Uh, you know you could be doing better, but this person is draining the life out of you. Uh, uh, before you came around them, you were way up high. You had all this energy. You felt like you could run a marathon. You felt like you could do whatever. But but after you had a, a conversation with them, after you spent some time with them, now you, everything is, is gone. It's, what happened? I don't feel like doing nothing anymore. They, they brought they brought you down. They're sucking the energy out of you. Now, now here, here are some, uh, some traits that psychologists uh, say that, um, that toxic people have. So the first one, I'm going to give you seven. The first one is that toxic people play the victim. Uh, nothing is ever their fault. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They could, have, they could have dropped the glass on the floor and it shattered and it's glass everywhere and you saw it with your eyes and they blame it on you. How in the world? I was in the other room looking and, and you dropped it and shattered it and how is it my fault? And, and got you believing that it's your fault. They play the victim. And you know, people who struggle with the victim mentality don't think that they have, they don't think that they have power over their lives. They blame other people and circumstances for how unhappy they are. Um, everything is everybody else's fault. Look how miserable I am, but it's not my fault. I'm not the problem. I can't do anything about this. If I change me, it's not gonna be better. Everybody else needs to change around me because it's everybody else's fault. They avoid responsibility. They don't take any responsibility on themselves. Have you, have you ever uh, been in a situation where you believe somebody owed you an apology? They did something completely wrong to you. But by the end of the conversation, they twisted it back on you. Yes. Well, Got you apologizing when they the ones that's wrong. That's, that's a classic victim attitude. They flip the script. And they're good at it, too. They've been doing it for years and years. They pros. They make you feel bad when it's their fault. You know, sometimes they had, they had bad circumstances that made them behave this way. But, but if you're 50 years old, you can't be blaming your childhood on, on, be, on your behavior. Come on now. If 
eventually you got to grow up. You know that sometimes, sometimes the people that use the victim mentality, they do it in a different way. They use bad circumstances to exploit people with resources. Um, they make people feel bad for them so that they can get something out of them. So, 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 so listen, uh, they, they allow, it allows them to avoid taking responsibility of themselves. And, and nothing is ever their fault. It's always something else. They're always the common denominator pointing at the numerator. They're the, they're the same one in every situation. They're in every situation, but in every situation there's a problem, but it's never their fault. It's always the other person's fault. Always. So how can they get you to feel bad for them so they can get what they want out of you? Sometimes, uh, you know, some beggars do this. Some beggars, they drive a better car and live in a bigger house than we do, but they're on the corner with signs. Saying homeless, lying, lying, lying. <laughs> got, a, got a wad full of cash in their pocket with a sign. <laughs> now for those that really have need, I mean, I, I, I love to help them, but man, they, those people ruin it for them. They ruin it for them. When you catch them, you catch them walking, when they walk away at the end of the day and they go get in a BMW and, and drive off with a wad full of cash. Yeah, this was my day off, I just made $1,000. <laughs> These people are so foolish. <laughs> Toxic. They, they, so some beggars, and then some family does it. <laughs> and, and friends, they ask you for money all the time, lying, saying they're going to pay you back, and they put GoFundMe's on Facebook, and, and they make you feel bad about this, this, and that, and then they just take all the money. And you know, you, you, sometimes you talk to these people and you try, to, you try to lift them up. You try to praise them and let them know, hey, listen, uh, God has a plan for you. If you would just follow his will, if you would just, just be right, if you would just try, just try, just get up and, and do something and put the work in. Faith without works is dead. You can do this. And they just, no, no, I, I can't, no, I can't do nothing. They, the victim mentality, they, nothing is, is ever good enough. They, they can never take responsibility for themselves. You try to lift them up, and they sin and send them on the way, but they always bring themselves down. And, and have you ever offered somebody constructive criticism, and, and then they just put up a wall? Yes. They just, you can't tell them nothing about themselves without them <laughs> back at you immediately. Immediately. Hey, hey listen, you know, uh, you know when you when you really just like rail on, on on that person at the restaurant, you didn't you didn't have to do that. They they were just trying to do their job. <laughs> well, well, can't tell them nothing without them yelling and and putting up walls and, and thinking that you're trying to trying to hurt them. Nobody's attacking you. You're trying to help. Well. That's the victim mentality. So that's the first one. The second one is emotional abuse. This, some toxic people will emotionally abuse you. And this is dangerous. This is very dangerous because when they emotionally abuse you, time after time, you're going, you're going to break one day. One day you're not gonna be able to take it and you might do something that you never ever intended and you never thought that you would ever do before. Um, so emotional abuse can be one of the most painful forms of violence, and, and it kills your self-esteem. It can be verbal, it can be yelling, it can be them belittling you, it can be them criticizing every single thing that you do and ridiculing you and accusing you of everything, and, and it can also be subtle. It can be them intimidating you like a bully. Um, they can be them manipulating you. They can, they can give you... The, the silent treatment if you're living in the same house. Um, these are toxic traits. And you know, sometimes uh, we have to examine ourselves because sometimes we throw that out and say, you know what, that person is toxic, but we done did the same thing before. We've done the same things before. So, so everybody sometimes has some of these traits, but we have to keep them in check. You have to keep the flesh in check and not let it run your life and follow the spirit. And so, you know, and sometimes you can be emotionally abusing somebody and you don't even know it. 
You don't even realize that that you're that you're belittling them, that you're that you're over criticizing them, that you're always yelling at them and making them feel like they're nothing. So that's why the Bible says, judge yourself that you should not be judged. You have to examine yourself. You have to think about, hey, listen, is there something that I could be doing to make my life better, to make my relationship better? You have to sometimes say, you know what? I could be the problem. It could be me. It could be me. So, so does this person uh, that you're having a relationship, do they treat you like a child? Um, uh, did they treat you like the child that never could please their father or mother? The child that just never was good enough. No matter what they do, they got straight A's. They, they, they got a full ride to Yale, and the father's still like, you ain't nothing. <laughs> you, you can't do nothing to please them. Did they treat you like that? Uh, does this person routinely ridicule your thoughts? It doesn't matter what you say. They make fun of you and make you feel like you're dumb. <laughs> Well, uh, and then do they do it on purpose to intentionally make you feel lower than them so that they can feel higher? Yeah, that's toxic. That's a bully. Yeah. That's that's toxic. Does this person make you feel like it's your fault when it's not your fault? Mm -hmm. Man, you know what? Am I am I wrong all the time? Am, am I all? Am I wrong every single time? There's no way that every single time you're right. Amen. There's no way that person is toxic. They're wrong. They're wrong. Now it's possible. Don't get me wrong. It's possible for you to be wrong a lot. It is possible. But every time, no, 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 no way that it's every time that person is belittling you. That person is showing toxic traits. Now, this is the next one, number three. Oh, this one gets to me. Pathological liars. People that just lie for no reason. Why? Just, I'm just asking, I'm just like, why? Why did you lie about that? Hey, listen, I, I, I got bit by this ant, man. It was like, it was like a foot long. What? Why, why did you, what? I was standing right there, I saw the ant. Why are you lying? It, you, want, you want me to feel more sorry for you? Is that what it is? They just lie. They just lie. They pathological lies, they take lying to the extreme. It's a sport to them. They, they enjoy it for some reason. And you know what? When you catch them in a lie, they don't feel bad about it. You, you catch them and they're just like, okay. Because they know they're going to keep on lying. <laughs> they constantly tell lies, uh, sometimes usually in an effort to protect their image. Um, they're masters of manipulation. They can lie straight to your face. Uh, they tend to be impulsive people with deep need to impress. That's sometimes the reason why they lie. They, they want people to think that they're this when they're not. Well. Their lies might not always have a purpose. Sometimes they just might lie to you just because they feel like it. Just lie all the time for no reason. They lie about things so mundane. It's like, it's like, why did you lie about that? It's not even that serious, bro. Come on. It's okay. You could have told the truth right there, man. <laughs> and like I said, the worst part is when you catch them, they don't feel bad about it. They don't feel bad at all. Hey, I, you listen, that's not what happened. I was right there. Okay. Don't even care. Lord have mercy. The, the fourth trick. Is, is toxic people, they seek to control you. Uh, they're, they're bullies. Uh, they want complete power over you. They want you to do whatever they want you to do. Uh, so, so some toxic people can be master manipulators and they're clever about hiding their true intentions. Uh, controlling people might want you to want to know where you are and who you are with at every single minute of the day. Uh, they might be vocal about it. Or they might control you in more subtle ways. They uh they they go through your phone every time uh, you come home and and you know make you feel like you're doing something when you're not. Um, and you know what? And, and this is this, you should not be telling your spouse what color to wear. Like that's 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 too extreme. 
this this person, uh, when you get up and you put something on, they're like, you know what? I don't want you to wear purple anymore. You look horrible in purple, and they try to manipulate them. You say they say, you know what? If you really loved me, you would wear what I want you to wear. And they trick you in your mind. And now you wake up in the morning going in your closet looking at your purple stuff. It's your favorite color. And you don't want to wear purple because they make you feel bad. If I wear purple, I don't love, I don't love my husband. If I wear, I don't love making you feel, they manipulate you. That's, that's, that's toxic. That's toxic. They seek control. And, and listen, the husbands, we are the head. But, but husbands, if you have a, a submissive wife, it's rare, but if you have a submissive, I'm not talking about anybody in here. It's not rare in here. All of y'all are submissive, loving wives. I'm talking about, I'm talking about everybody else out there. It's, it's rare to find out there, out there somewhere. If you have a submissive wife that really, really treats you like Sarah treated Abraham, don't, it's easy to become a bully. It's, it's easy. When you have power, when she really will, will what, do you, what do you want, honey? What is it that you need? What do you need? Um, it's really easy to use that, let that power get to your head. So you can easily become toxic if you don't watch yourself, judge yourself. Um, so husbands, don't become a bully. <laughs> if, you, if you have a truly submissive wife that allows you to lead, it may be easy to let that power go to your head. Um, like I said, it's rare to find one of those, but not in here. <laughs> not in here. You need to love them and take care of them like they're you. You're one flesh. Uh, like they're your body. Like you take care of yourself, that's how you take care of your wife. Amen. Uh, the fifth, the fifth one is is the people that don't respect your boundaries. Now, this is this goes a few different ways. Um, one way is that man that takes you out on a date and continues to pester you into having sex with him. That, that continues to, to try. He knows that you're a woman of God. He knows that, that you don't want to, but he keeps on, keeps on, keeps on, keeps on. Hey, it's all right. It's all right. You know, you, you got to test it out, you know? you know? Before we get married, you, you can't. You don't want to marry me and not know how it is. You need to know if it's good. No, 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 that's, that's toxic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't respect your boundaries because they don't care. Uh, so, so toxic people, sometimes they project their vulnerabilities and insecurities onto another person in the form of anger and bullying. They're incapable of respecting people's boundaries. They can't process their own toxic toxicity, so they deal with it by putting it onto somebody else. You know, imagine you draw a line. You draw a line. This is your boundary. And, and, and you can't cross this boundary. Listen, my, my limit is when you put your hands on me. You can say whatever you want, but when you put your hands on me, we're done. It's over. It's over. Right? We can fight. We can do this, this, and that. But when you put your hands on me, we're done. And you draw that line. And, and, and this person, they, they play with it. They play with the line. They put, they put their foot over it. <laughs> I'm not touching you. <laughs> they're playing with the line. And they're doing it just to see if they can get a re reaction out of you. Because once they get a reaction out of you, you done crossed your line and came over to their line, and now you're the one that's wrong. And then they make you, they turn it around on you when you was the one that was pestering them for 20 years. <laughs> turn it around on you. They're playing with your emotions and they know that and they're, they're pros at it. They just want to see how you respond and then sometimes they'll walk over the line deliberately because they know it will bother you. They know exactly how to get to you. Exactly how to mess with your head. So listen, when you draw a line and they cross it, Sometimes because we're loving and we're caring, when we draw that line and they cross it, we back up and draw another line. And then they come and they cross that line, and then we back up and we draw another line. And we keep on backing up and drawing more lines. No, you need to stand by your boundaries. So, so when, you, when you get along with that, with that person and you say, listen, I'm, I'm celibate, I'm, I'm a virgin, I'm... I'm keeping myself from marriage, and then 
And you say, we're not going to be getting alone. And then you get alone and they, and they make a move and then you, you back up and you draw another line. We're just not gonna go any further than that. And then you back up and you draw, eventually, what happens? Now you've crossed your boundaries. So protect your line and don't just let people cross it. So, so Christians are supposed to be kind, like I said, but we're not a punching bag. We don't just roll with the punches. You have to stand up for yourself. Now listen, don't be a jerk. <laughs> don't, don't, be, uh, don't be rude to people, but you have to stand up for yourself. You have to find that line um, because people are looking at you, especially when you proclaim to be a Christian. Oh, you a Christian? But you acting like that. So whenever you respond, even when somebody's doing you wrong, even when they're 100% wrong and you just lash out at them, guess what? Because you claim that you're a Christian, now they're looking at you like you're wrong. So there's a line. There's, there's a balance. You have to, you have to find it. It's, it's hard, I know, but you have to find it. And uh, I have to move on. Number six, uh, negative people. Lord have mercy. Everyone can feel negative sometimes. Everybody can. But man, uh, when, when this person, these, these toxic people are negative, I'm serious. Every single thing that they say out of their mouth is negative. You can't, they can't say nothing good about anything. Every time you talk to them, man, they just complain about everything. Nothing is good. And that negativity, it spreads like a wildfire. Yeah. Um, maybe you have somebody like that at work. Somebody that, that when you talk to them, they ain't never got nothing good to say. Got you wanting to quit your job. <laughs> and, and you got a good job. And, and, and your boss loves you. And everything is great. You, this is your dream job. But you come up to them, man, maybe I made a mistake. I need, man, I need to get up out of here. <laughs> Just draining all of the positivity out of your life. That's poison. That's toxic. Stay away from those people. They can only speak bad news or, or negative stories or they complain nonstop. Some people just have nothing good 